comic book junkies it's the frog queen here and today i'm bringing you another weekly comic book creator interview this week i had the pleasure of interviewing katie skelly who's written amazing original graphic novels such as my pretty vampire nurse nurse and operation margarine today katie has a special announcement about her upcoming book make sure you check out and subscribe to all of katie's social media the links will be in the description below this video and before we get on with the interview please give this video a big thumbs up because that will let me know that you want to see more great creator interviews and of course if you're new here please hit that subscribe button for more videos about comics uh so how are you doing today i'm good i'm good we just had like a two-day heat wave in New York City, and now it's gone, and it's, like, gloomy and cold again, so I'm not really excited about that, but otherwise, pretty good. Oh, then that's really similar to what we're experiencing, except I don't think we ever got the heat wave. I think we yeah. just got the gloom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was. it's rough. I mean, we've had, like, a really rough March and April, so mm -hmm. to go back to cold is a huge bummer, but, you know, getting yeah. through it. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. not fun. Um, so I was wondering if we could start by um, telling me what you're currently working on. Sure. Um, right now, I'm still in the stages of writing my next comic, um, but it is a true crime comic. Um, I'm still going back and forth on what I want the name to be, but it's the true story of the Papin sisters, um, two French maids in France in the 30s who killed their patron's family in oh. this really gory, really... Um, ritualistic way and so I'm still like kind of doing research and still writing it um, but it's my first time taking on like a true story in like not so much a factual way but you know something that actually happened so yeah just working on that right now oh cool I don't know anything about that that I'm a big true crime buff in general mm -hmm. but I don't think I've ever heard anything about them they're called the Pan Sisters Papan P-A-P-I-N um, okay Mm -hmm. right. The reason that I know about them is because there's a Claude Chabrol film um, with Isabelle Huppert that sort of looks at the like framework of the crime and then adapts it for like contemporary 80s France or 90s France. Oh. Um, and that was that's a great film. So I was like, oh, what is it like? And then you find out that it was based on a true story. And you're like, what is going on here? And so um, Jean Genet wrote a play about it as well. But it, it takes a lot of liberties. So like every sort of fictional account of it just takes so many liberties and like make so much stuff up. And that was like, I just really want to get into some research and really try to bring justice to the true story. Cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I'm going to have to go look it up because I'm like, oh, and I definitely haven't seen those those films, uh, that film at all. So mm -hmm. I definitely have yeah. to check that out. I um, recommend it. Sorry? I, I definitely recommend uh, the Chabrol film is called La Ceremony. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now I'm going to look that up for sure. Yeah. Check it out. Um, so, of course, the last, the last book that I read of yours, and I think it was the last one that was released, is My Pretty Vampire, mm -hmm. was it? Um, but you've also, I know that you've done like uh, some different things recently um, as you did Twisted Romance, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that. I know it's it's over now. It just ended, but I'm sure there's going to be a collected trade out soon. Yes. I believe the trade is going to be September, September or October. Oh, okay. um, but I did the lead story in issue one. Um, and so Twisted Romance was a four-part miniseries that came out every week in February. So it's like a super ambitious project. Um, Alex DeCampi wrote the main stories and sort of like collected all of the artists that she wanted to work on it. And so I did the first one. And um, I sort of just like, I said that my New Year's resolution is going to be that I'm going to pay more attention this year because I wasn't really paying attention when I signed up for it. I I say yes to so many things. It was like, yes, I want to do it. Yes, yes, yes. And I didn't realize that the deadline intersected with like me being on tour with my pretty vampire. Oh, so, ouch. That's rough. So it was tough. It was a lot. Um, so I ended up just like working through the holidays and I didn't go home to see my family and they're still a little shaken up about that. But, um, oh, no. <laughs> it's cool but it just uh it was a really intense project and it's a 28 page comic that I put together in like five or six weeks so it, it really wow. really moved fast um but it's uh 
every issue was a different sort of take on a romance story, a different take on the genre and all different types of characters and storylines and settings. And it, it was really ambitious and really, really cool. So I'm glad I got to be a part of that. My story was a uh, New York in the seventies story about an incubus and sort of like he puts together an agency, um, to get rid of mistresses and stuff like that. And it was just really, really <laughs> clever. I loved it. Oh, it was really good. Uh, I liked it a lot. I like that whole series. Like, I can't wait for it to be collected. Even though I have like the floppies, I'm just like, oh, it'd be really fun just to have like something for the shelf. You know, oh, not sure. just in a box, of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I love anytime I'm printed in anything. I'm like, this is great. <laughs> so, but yeah, I I was super happy to be a part of that. And Alex is um, putting something new together now, and hopefully we'll get the chance to work again very soon. I, I don't know how she finds the time. She's always got like so many projects <laughs> on the go. It's like, ah, oh, how do you do I know. that? I would totally like mix them all up. Mm -hmm. And, like, get confused about each individual project anyway. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I don't really know how she does it either. But I, I interviewed her for the Comics Journal a couple months ago. Oh, okay. And that was really cool cause, because, you know, we know each other, like, from both being in New York and we know each other from comics. But, like, to actually be able to, like, sit down with her and find out, you know, how do you do all of this? How do you – where do your ideas actually come from? You're very, like, invested in the world. Obviously, you just, like, know so much. You have so many interests. How do you make all of this stuff work? And I think we got to a couple good places that were, like, illuminating in that interview. So that was really fun. Oh, cool. Yeah, she's awesome. awesome. Mm -hmm. Um. So, of course, uh, My Pretty Vampire came out. I know I reviewed it, but my memory's bad, and I can't remember when <laughs> it came out. It was the fall, wasn't it? Yeah, I think the official release date was September of 2017. Okay. So it, too long. Mm -hmm. it does sound like it was, like, reasonably a while ago, but I, I, mm -hmm. now my problem is I read too much, and um, I can't remember. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, I remember that book so well, but when did I read it? <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so of course I loved it and I love that it's a Fantagraphics book. Thank you. Um, but I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about like what inspired, um, that story and that book in particular. Mm -hmm. With every large comics project that I set out to do that I write and I draw, like I always kind of start with a sensation, some kind of emotion that I want to get to the heart of and tell a story around. And I was going through a lot when I started writing My Pretty Vampire. And I had this sort of like cynicism and um, reluctance to like be a part of the world. I really just wanted to like hide myself away work on comics, not interact with anybody. And I started feeling like I'm going in my coffin every night to just work. <laughs> and um, because in a way, at that time, it was easier to do that than to just deal with being a human. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I started working with that sensation. And right around that time, I was doing the Trash Twins podcast with Sarah Horrocks. And we started looking at genre land films. And I was like, there's something here. There's absolutely something here. These, you know, French teenage vampires that just like are so destructive and so cool. I'm like, oh, this is what I want to be working in so badly. <laughs> and so looking at that and then looking at, you know, my sort of like tried and true, I feel like I always talk about this. It's like my old chestnut, but like I always look at Guy Pellard. I always look at Guido Cripax and I always look at Jean-Claude Forrest and that's my like holy trinity. Yeah. And Going back and rereading everything and thinking like, okay, I want to do something that feels like it came from this time period, but it's absolutely not. I don't want, I don't like to do pastiche. I like to, to take genre and see like, where can I insert myself into it? Um, so yeah, it was all sort of born of that. And then I also like, I had this feeling at the time that like things were coming too easily to me. I was like, I feel like if I really wanted to get out in the world and like manipulate people and manipulate things to my advantage, it would be very easy for me to do that. And I started feeling this like guilt about that. I wasn't doing it. I wasn't, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't like <laughs> out sending people to my will or biting people or anything like that. But I just felt like, like I had this like power in me that was malevolent and I was like I just want to explore what that would feel like for a character I'm not actually going to do it I want to see how <laughs> it would feel to be someone that goes to a party and 
bites people or, you know, um, trolls the street looking for victims and all that kind of thing. So, so yeah, it, it was all sort of born of like angst and then my favorite European comics. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, I remember like when I read it, it was interesting that you said, you mentioned the films for one (laughs) and, um, um, also of of course, Crepex. Uh, Crepex, um, which I always found was really interesting about like your your art in general is that you can take like something very um, adult and serious um, and mesh it with a, the more cartoony um, kind of um, kind of like uh, uh, illustrations. But um, I've s- read so many failures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of like books that tried to do this mm-hmm. um and i mean i find you know your work it always has it's, it's has a lot of sexual power and a, a sexual energy while being very like not realistic looking mm-hmm. right so um which i love of course um and i think it's like it's so hard to pull that off i think only a very few people can be sexy and cartoony <laughs> at the same time <laughs> thank you um, which the only person like that I immediately always think of, of course, is like Brandon Graham. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm always like, yep. oh, Brandon's porn. It's sexy, but it's totally cartoony, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, I find it's, it's such a difficult thing. To, and it's so amazing when people can actually make it work. And, it, and well, it's thank successful. You. So. Thank you. I'm glad to hear you say that because actually I – this is like the first time I am telling anybody in like a public way, oh, but okay. I have a new um, a book from Fanographics coming out in June, which is a compilation of erotic comics that I did. Oh. So that's coming out. Thank you. That's coming out um, from their imprint, which is Fanographics Underground. So it's going to be 80, uh, 80 pages, full color, nice, big erotic collection so i'm very excited for that that's so. wicked oh, you heard I'm... it here first you got an exclusive oh, yay <laughs> thank you <laughs> no problem and it's fanographics which is awesome oh man like uh they put out the best looking hard covered books too like that's another yeah. thing that i always i always feel like my money is well spent i'm getting a very durable book it's not going to crumble in a couple years you know yeah Absolutely. And linking up with them was major for me. And it was something that I always wanted. And going back and being able to work with that same team again was really great. Um, Keely McCarthy, who designed the cover, she did the layout for all of my pretty vampire, um, did layouts and covers again on the new one. So it's called The Agency. Um, So yeah, she killed it again. She's just the best. So um, your process, I was going to ask you, is it like, because um, you're writing and you're illustrating, but like, what is your process exactly? Because I mean, I, I know everybody does something completely different when they're <laughs> fully in charge of their comic in such a way and the creative, the creative side. So um, I was wondering if you could tell me a bit about like the mediums you use, um, if you do anything by hand, if it's computer or whatever, and mm-hmm. how you start writing in general. <laughs> yeah. The writing process is chaos. There's no other way to describe it. It's <laughs> always a mess. I get really far into a script and then I'm like, eh, throw it all away. Oh. And I'll maybe keep like one or two pages and it just, it takes forever and I'm always at odds with myself. And then when I'm actually sitting down to draw it, I'm still editing. So I'm taking things out. It A lot of it is paring stuff down. And that's where, like, I think the cartoony element comes from because I'll realize that, like, I've bit off more than I can chew. (laughs) And the reason that my stuff is so cartoony is because, like, if I went to draw, like, a Craypax or a Forest, it would look so goofy because when I over-render, it's like, forget it. This looks like trash. So when I keep it really pared down and I go, like, more of a Pell Art sort of route, then it's going to look really good. So, and I find that to be true with, like, storylines as well. Like, you know, I had had so much more written for my pretty vampire that I wanted to get into. And then I was just like, this just isn't working. It's, it's too serious. It's too, um, it's just not me. It doesn't feel like me. So when I'm writing, I'm like looking for those things that feel like they wouldn't, it's so pretentious to say this, but like they wouldn't be in a Katie Skelly comic. They don't belong there. So I cut and I cut and I cut. And then when I go to draw, I'm just working, um, my pages have gotten bigger and bigger (laughs) throughout the years. I'm working on 14 by 17 inch paper now, Bristol. Um, and it's the same thing that I've done since I was, you know, six years old, get the ruler out, mark everything, 
and then just start going to town. Yeah. So it it's chaos up until the point when I start drawing, which is weirdly calm. Like I, I started like running again recently. And the thing with running is like, I just have to turn my brain off and yeah. I can do it when I'm drawing. It's really hard when you're running, but I can do it when I'm drawing. Just like we're done. Like I'm, I'm out of the world. This is my time to do what I'm supposed to be doing. And yeah, somehow that comes together. But the writing is, it makes me want to quit every time. Oh no. <laughs> it's so hard. I won't, I'm not going to let it get the best of me, but it's, that's tough. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh man, I, I always feel the opposite. I'm like, I, you know, I'm te technically a trained artist. I went to school for illustration and <laughs> I, all I do is write. <laughs> so it's that's, the opposite problem, really. <laughs> that's cool though. I mean, I, hats off to you. That's, that's uh, the hard shit. I, I still haven't, I still haven't even finished anything. I'm not happy with anything. So I've never <laughs> even submitted it for anyone to look at. I edit other people's comics. Like, you know, so, oh, well. <laughs> I get that. I anyway. get that. <laughs> um, so I was curious, um, one of your books I, I haven't gotten to read was, uh, Operations Marger Margarine, <laughs> Operation Margarine. I say that wrong every time. I, I keep trying <laughs> to say it. Um, and uh, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit what inspired that story, which is a motorcycle story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, gosh, that one, that was back when I was really obsessed with Russ Meyer. <laughs> and I was really obsessed with like this idea of like a road movie and road sort of exploitation. Um, so yeah, that, that was what I was looking at back then. I don't really know that there was like a particular set of comics that like influenced that I think it was really just this notion of like I want to do something that feels like it has total freedom because mm -hmm. the book that I had done before Nurse Nurse was in outer space and that actually ended up even though it was like a sort of travelogue kind of a thing it felt very claustrophobic because everything was in a spaceship you know what I mean so I wanted to do something where it was like we're out on the open road and you know there's actual space and I actually like it's set in the desert. I actually like went to the desert. I like took a little like pilgrimage to Palm oh, Springs and drove around. Cool. It was really cool. <laughs> um, and I, what I found was like, I always end up kind of guessing what things are going to be like when I'm writing like a setting, like nurse nurse. I was like, I wonder, I bet this feels like Scandinavia. And then I went to Iceland when it was finished and I was like, yeah, I nailed it. I nailed it. And then I was like halfway done with Marjorie and I went to the desert and I was like, did it again. I nailed it. I know exactly what's going on in the world. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was inspired by that sort of a thing. I think like I wanted to do something where characters were escaping from what they were what they had in their past what they were afraid of and I think vampire just dives right into it it's like I don't want to be afraid I want to just attack so mm -hmm. yeah they're very they're aggressive in different ways mm. I find it interesting um that like your female characters um and the way that they have to interact with like the men in their life mm -hmm. <laughs> it never I goes great <laughs> I was wondering if you could talk about it <laughs> Um, I just, it's so easy to write men as antagonists for me, you know, it's, so, it's the easiest thing in the world. And I think when I write women antagonists, they're still pretty great. Like you still want to follow them and be interested in them. And with men, I'm just like, you're, you're just kind of like a cog in, in this story. Um, and I, I do Hello, actually, plot device. <laughs> exactly. I do want to get better at, about writing men, but I just, I don't. I also don't include them that much because I don't like to draw men. I just don't, you know, women are very much like the center of my universe as like a person. And so I gravitate towards drawing women and fleshing them out more. And I like writing them more. And, you know, that it's just a weird, it's like an internal prejudice. I need to get over it. <laughs> I'm working on it. Well, but I also, now I'm writing a story about two sisters. So it's like, I'm back in that, in that yeah. world. So yeah, men to me are like in the, in the stories, I like to put them in as interruptions, um, uh, sort of like roadblocks, that kind of a thing. Cause mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah. I think there are a lot of stories that treat women that way. So I think that's only fair. Definitely. You know? Yeah. I, that actually, it, I think I'm thinking of it mostly because of the comics that I was reviewing today. And I read um, the latest IDW's new Crow series. It was uh, Memento 
something memento something it's the new crow series mm -hmm. and uh you know the if you've you probably have seen the movies or read the crow yeah. or something yeah okay so then you're familiar with the format <laughs> well the format's the same again you know dead woman revenge story and i was sure. just like man there's so much you could do with like you know this story and just not imaginative at all <laughs> yeah. well sometimes with with genre stuff too it's like that audience knows what to expect and so when it doesn't deliver on that that's mm. like the worst thing that can happen so like i, I kind of get it i kind of get it yeah i mean uh, yeah but then i anyways as i was writing about it i started uh, talking about all these other things where like women are just plot devices in in a lot of stories and how that that was very much something that happened in the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. um and we're kind of stepping out of that over the last 10 years it feels like you know of course there's exceptions of course but a lot of the times you know it really did feel like you know women were just plot devices and roadblocks yeah. or reasons for a man to do this or that yeah um, but yeah, so, uh, whereas when I read My Pretty Vampire, we have, um, I can't remember his name, but, uh, her, uh, caretaker, I guess it's, it's her brother, wasn't uh, it? Marcel, yeah. Marcel, yeah. <laughs> and he's just this constant and annoying, overprotective, <laughs> but not really, not really in a good way, <laughs> kind of. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I thought that was so nice because it, you know, it makes, um, he's not the center of attention. Yeah. Right. Right. If, if, and even more than anything, you know, I think he's just a completely impotent character. He can't mm -hmm. control this thing that he's created. He can't even recall her, he can't get her back. Like, yeah, I think he's, he's sort of the like quintessential man that I've been writing. So I'm, <laughs> I want to get nicer. I do. Um, I'm working on it. Oh. We'll get there. <laughs> Oh, well, oh, well. Um, so I was going to ask you as well, um, what was your favorite uh, book to work on, or your favorite project in general to work on? The erotic stuff was the hardest to work on uh -huh. because it felt so vulnerable. And it felt like I was publishing them online, and it was really the first time I had ever done anything like that, like strictly for online. And every time a new one would come out. I tried to do them like every two weeks or something. I think, um, I just felt like I was having a heart attack <laughs> because oh. I was like, I was like, Oh my God, everyone's going to know, <laughs> you know, and I didn't use a fake name. I didn't do anything like that. I just put it out. Um, but those are my favorite for that reason, because they challenged me so much and they were fun to work on. The scary part was just letting other people see them because yeah. you know, like when you're working on that kind of schedule, it's like, um, you don't know, like, if it's going to be really good, or you don't know if you're rushing it, or like, am I conveying all of this sort of stuff properly? So yeah, but I think I think they're secretly like the best thing I've ever done. Oh, that's so exciting. I can't <laughs> wait to you. see it. I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's fun, too. And it's like, it just doesn't, they don't take themselves too seriously. And I don't know that if you're like someone who's looking for something really hardcore, it's going to be your thing. But I think if you're like following along with me on this like journey of my European sleaze, like sexploitation <laughs> adventures, you're going to enjoy it. Oh, that's so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I love a good sleaze. I mean, I, I'm a huge Manara fan, of course. So oh, yeah, I um, love and love Crepax and I, I just, I don't know, sleaze and sleaze it up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I love Minara too. He, he's gotten a bad rap in recent years. Oh, so severely I bad. Forever, For, I think I, he's always had that. Yeah, he's, he's always been controversial. Mm -hmm. You know, and whenever, and I mean, Marvel has hired him so many times over the years. And it, it never get. I don't. I don't even know why he still agrees to do it because <laughs> like, it's never well received. There's right. always so much like negative attention around <laughs> it. I feel like he's just a like they're doing it for publicity most of the time. They're like, yeah, we want to hype this up. Let's get Minara to do something. Yeah, which <laughs> like know? that's the level that I would love to be at. Like I would love to be the person you call to be like, 
let's get in trouble, guys. Who do we need? We need to call 1-900-SKELLY and make this happen. Like, <laughs> that is my dream. But, yeah, um, I mean, you don't – you just don't see – comics like Minara's you just don't see that that level of skill and it's so wild because like he's definitely one of my favorites I don't include him in my trinity because it's so realistic like it's just rendered a little bit too well and I like a flaw I like seeing work that's a little scuffed I like you know something that is missing the mark is way more interesting to me than someone that can really like present everything perfectly do you know Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting, um, like, when you, uh, you pr- probably read Understanding Comics, right? Um, so, uh, in there, you know, there's a talk about, of course, how when we perceive somebody, uh, you know, as you said, there's not rendered perfectly and realistically, <laughs> we can e- more easily attach ourselves to that character in that position and envision ourselves unconsciously as we're reading um yet you can't really do that with um books like Monero's work or mm-hmm. even books like um another one George Bess who's like gorgeously talented and amazing but like no it is like too <laughs> damn realistic to like yeah. think you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, same with like anything, basically almost anything that Jodorowsky has ever attached his name to, um, except for Mobius, of course, because Mobius knew how to uh, manipulate an audience. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, so I always find that really interesting. And I mean, um, but you're right, you know, that's that is kind of like the reason why, although Monero is so wonderful and his work is mm-hmm. so beautiful. Um, yeah, you, you, it, it does lack that, that you can't really feel you're into it. Mm-hmm. You know, it lacks that personal touch, I guess, in that way. Yeah, there's a coldness to it in a way. But every now and then you do see, like, Minara sort of shine through when he's like, like, you know what? I'm just really obsessed with, like, Angelina Jolie. Why don't I just <laughs> do... I love Tomb Raider, you know? Like, let me just... <laughs> and I love those sort of choices because you're like this is so garish. Like, this is so (laughs) corny. But okay, you know, you can do it. If I could draw Angelina Jolie very well, I would draw her in every single comic. But I can't do her Minara justice. So it's like, you got this guy. So good. (laughs) Uh, Oh, that's great. Um, So yeah, I was also going to ask you what, uh, if you had any touring plans or any plans to hit up any, if you're working in any cons or doing any kind of appearances this year, um, if you could let us know so people can try to make it out. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, First thing I'm doing is Heroes in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. So that is going to be June 15th, 16th, 17th, I believe. Yes. Um, So I'll be there for that. I'm going to do commission sketches. Hopefully I'm going to have the agency with me. And I'm also working really, really hard to get a tarot deck together. So I'm hoping that's where I can debut that as well. Oh, that'd be Um, fun. It's going to be so fun. It's so much work. Oh, my God. Uh, like oh. a full tarot deck full deck oh seven six yeah it's it's real but it's really fun and i think i might crowdfund that too so we'll see what happens um Do people get it online or is it convention only i think i think it's going to be available online i i might actually kickstart it and just do oh. like a pre-sale that way oh, okay. take like care of the cost way. yeah mm. but oh my god just another thing to figure out um so i'll be at heroes and then i'm taking a little break in july um, unless I'm doing a sign, I don't have anything booked yet. Um, but then in August, I'm going to be in Boise, Idaho for the boy. I don't know the name of the show, Boise comic show, but I'll be there as a special guest. That's going to be the end of August. Um, I'm going to be at the Brooklyn book fest in September and then CXC in Columbus, Ohio in October. And then I think most likely mice in Cambridge, Massachusetts in October, but we haven't confirmed it yet. So a lot going on. Cool. Wow, oh, that's so awesome. good. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, it's it's all good. That's wicked. Um, I was gonna say, sorry, I this is it's late for me. My brain goes a little bit at this time of the day, and most my my fan or not my fans, but my my watchers, 
Yeah. My viewers, they're used to me getting really stupid when I do <laughs> interviews because I almost always do them in the evening. And I start like my speech starts slowing down and I get really dumb. But I, wake I think up you're doing morning. amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I wake up so early like that. I know that 730 is not very late, but it feels late to me. <laughs> I get that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's just kind of pathetic. <laughs> anyway. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, my. Um so, uh, of course, I follow you on Instagram. I was wondering if you could tell us where everybody else can follow you. Yes, if please. anything else that I should know about. <laughs> um, I'm on Twitter. My handle is at nurse underscore nurse. And then I'm also on Instagram. And my handle is at skelly, skelly, skelly. My last name three times. Right. And those are the big ones. That's where I post, like, the most up-to-date stuff. Wicked. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on my show. Um, I will have this up probably in a week's time. Usually it takes yeah. me about a week to edit things together. <laughs> Sounds great. Take your time. Hey, thank you so much for having me. This was really, really great. And awesome. I love your videos. I'm, I'm excited to be a part of Oh, thank your you. Channel. I try. I try. I'm, I have a backlog. I'm actually, yeah, I've been working too much and I have a backlog right now. So I have like all these ones to post. Oh, so nice. I guess got to finish like adding the little add on the, the endings and stuff on it. Yeah. I haven't had the opportunity, but anyway, oh, yeah. we'll get there. Yeah. But, and uh, thank yeah. you so much for your kind review of My Pretty Vampire as well. Oh, no, I love that book. Thank yeah. you. Oh, I had, and I should I say. I ordered it like as soon as I found out about it. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you so much. I should say also it's going into its second printing. Oh, so, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you to people like you spreading the word. So I appreciate I that. I actually don't even remember seeing it. Yeah, because I, I always kind of look on Amazon to see, like, mm -hmm. oh, like, is something selling? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it was sold out last time I looked at it on there. Yes, it, it was sold out um, at, like, the distributor level for a while and then found some more copies and moved them around. But it's been, like, right. chaos like, with this book because it was in demand. And, like, that's an amazing thing. So yeah. people, like, are getting out I'm very pumped. And the second second printing in hardcover is like, I feel very fancy. So no, it's all good. amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All it right. was lovely to talk to you. I really appreciate this. Thank you. Great to talk to you as well. I hope to talk to you again in the future. Maybe we can <laughs> chat after um, your next book comes out or something yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely be adding that to the list. Um, can you read the name again? I, I didn't write it down. Oh, the name of the book? Um, yeah. It's called the agency the agency okay yeah mm -hmm. i put it on the list okay <laughs> i'll make, make sure you get a copy oh thank you mm -hmm. no problem i'll probably have it pre-ordered anyway <laughs> <laughs> anyway i'd love to hear that <laughs> all right everybody else should pre-order it too because it's erotica and i know everyone who watches my channel is a big erotica fan so <laughs> it's gonna be great it's gonna be great <laughs> <laughs> all right well you have a fantastic evening thank you so you too thank you have a good night bye bye guys thank you <laughs> Bye.